So there's finally something on Disney Plus that I want to watch. <laughs> on February 19th, 2021, Disney Plus uploaded almost the entire five seasons of Jim Henson's 1970-1980 classic variety comedy musical show, The Muppet Show. I have been a fan of this show since I was about 10, 11 years old. I had the first three seasons on DVD, like the original releases of the DVDs where it had like this slip cover and then it like came out and folded, or maybe sometimes it was a trifold. Season one was a trifold and had a booklet. And the seasons two and three that I had were flocked, so Miss Piggy and Fozzie Bear were fuzzy. But I never had a way to legally watch seasons four and five. So them finally being available on like a major streaming platform is huge. And I'm gonna be talking about why them putting this program, this almost 20, almost 50 year program onto the streaming platform is huge for the brand. But before we do that, I wanna say a thank you to my many subscribers. Thank you for being here. And to any new people, welcome to my HodgePodge YouTube channel where anything is fair game. I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting. We are currently in the middle of a subscriber goal. If I get 2,150 subscribers by the second week in March, I will be doing a ranking video of my McDonald's Funko Pops with my roommate, Anna. All of them finally arrived. I'll do a quick insert shot here somewhere to appease people so that you know I'm on the up and up. Yeah, here they are. So if we reach that 2150 goal, we will be doing a ranking video of how pretty to ugly we think that each of them are. But in my opinion, all of them are beautiful in their own special way. Okay, so let's go back to what, <laughs> let's go back. So I don't really have a script written for this video, so I'm gonna be talking candidly um, just because I, I have a bunch of thoughts about it and I wasn't quite sure how to condense them in a way that seemed more academic. So like I said this before, this show is almost like a 50 year old property. It's 40, it's in its like late 40s, but it will be turning 50 here within I think the next five, six years. So it's like 45, 46 years old. Point being, this how would this show from the 70s and early 80s be relevant to anybody today? Good question. It is my personal opinion that we haven't had any consistently good Muppet projects since before 2000, ending with debatably Muppets in space. So the fact that Disney Plus is uploading all of this like OG Muppet content is huge for the Muppet brand and huge for people who might have liked like the 2011 Muppets movie and the 2014 follow-up Muppets Most Wanted, but haven't been satisfied with their um, internet projects or like that Chuck Lorre Muppet show that was on in 2015 that kind of missed the mark. But here we get 118, because the full series isn't up there uh, for some reason, rights, rights for stuff, that's the reason. But we have like 118 episodes of this musical variety program starring the Muppets and whoever was popular at the time, contemporarily. But again, uh, going back to like the dated thing, people might be questioning, oh, how is that relevant to kids today? Well, here's the thing. The stars might not be relevant to people today, although some of them are still alive, but the more relevant part of the program is the comedy, the music, and the atmosphere. One of my first exposures to the Muppets was The Muppet Wizard of Oz, released in uh, 2005. And let me tell you, that was a period of identity crisis for the Muppets. But like not long after, because on that DVD there was an advertisement for season one on DVD of The Muppet Show, I got the first season, <laughs> second, I got the second season first whatever. But after watching that program, I was just like, okay, wow, now I get like what this Muppet appeal is. They are funny, they are tender, and they have a lot to offer, and, and but not like a commentary on society that was like huge in like shows at the time when the Muppet show was released. Every episode has like this huge like, oh, let's put on a show kind of energy, but like also it feels like, let's do a show, but on a budget. And a lot of the songs seem not like, let's do really popular hits of the day, but like, let's do these timeless 
songs in like a kind of timeless setting. Some of the 70s design really drips in here and there. But it's like, let's do these timeless songs in a timeless setting and have these people sing them and perform them in a timeless way. Since they're from like really before like popular culture began to like date itself days, they really do come across as timeless because you have hits that are like A.A. A. Milne poems set to music or you have like old Cole, Cole Porter songs and sometimes you have like popular songs by Harry Belafonte, which is one of the most beautiful moments in the show. But these songs are interspersed between like moments of comedy, random backstage plots that might seem like fluff to fill up an episode, but they really are the grounding moments that make you care and identify for these characters. Season one is an entirely different beast because we are still getting to know, like the puppeteers are starting to like get a feel for these characters, but like we as an audience are like, trying to figure out what these characters are all about. Like, what are, what are their gags? What are their motivations? What are their likes or their dislikes, etc. And so while there is no overarching plot throughout the five seasons of The Muppet Show, there are overarching ideas. One of the most importantly is like Piggy's infatuation with Kermit and they're on again, off again, who knows. Fozzie Bear's neuroses in season one kind of develops into a comfortable complacency by the fact that, yeah, he knows his jokes are bad, but like he's gonna tell him anyway, cause it doesn't matter. It's kind of like, it's stuff like that, that we really get to see like the evolution of these characters and it makes you care for them eventually towards the end. But not everything in the show was like wacky, zany, mile a minute jokes. There are a lot of times where the show takes its time and slows down and lets you just relish in like these beautiful songs, these simple but beautiful sets, and the gorgeous harmonies that every once in a while just really hit you right there. The earliest example I have of something like this is in the Sandy Duncan episode where she sings a song to Kermit and then a bunch of the Muppets come up like beside them and like sing these harmonies in um, Try to Remember from the Fantastics. Try to remember, and if you remember, then follow. There are a lot of moments like that sprinkled through season one, but they are not the overwhelming majority, which makes these moments feel much more special. Which brings me to probably my last point in this video, <laughs> that this show just reeks of a certain kind of different atmosphere that a lot of programs aimed towards families now kind of lack. There's been like this real divide between entertainment for kids and entertainment for adults and there are, very, there's, are not often a lot of programs that are aimed for family audiences where the kids can like laugh at the humor and like and maybe enjoy some of the songs but like the adults will understand some jokes on a different level and like appreciate songs on a different level that their kids might not. But The Muppet Show represents like the, this unique blend of culture and atmosphere and generations that I feel is lacking in a lot of programming today. And I know I sound like a boomer when I say that, but like I had a unique upbringing where this was one of my childhood staples and not a lot of my friends, except my brother who I was sometimes forced to watch episodes because I'm just like, you have to see this joke, it's so funny. But like not a lot of, personally, not a lot of my friends have ever even heard of this show, let alone sat down and watched it. But I think it made me a unique individual and having this available on such like a popular platform will give it some new life. Will give a younger generation a bigger and perhaps greater appreciation for the Muppets, not only as characters, but as an art form. Okay, I think that's enough rambling for today. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscription bell, remember our goal, and hit the thumbs up button. It'd be really cool to see you again. Like, really cool. <laughs> Alright, this is Dustin signing off, but only for now.